Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be drawing the characters Zhongli and Child from Genshin Impact. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video. Also, it's very windy today, so I apologize if you can hear that. <laughs> I really need to invest in like, like a professional microphone. <laughs> so yeah, as you can tell, these two drawings will be done, or they're done digitally in the app Procreate. So I'm only using the footage that Procreate automatically records. So I hope that's not a problem. <laughs> and I believe I've made a few digital drawing videos before, but I've never really gone in depth. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So first off, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about these drawings and you know just the drawing process and the brushes I use and the layers and all that and then later on I'll talk about Genshin Impact and these characters and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah the first person that you see me drawing is Zhang Li um, and I actually made the sketch in my sketchbook first and I believe I just took a photo of that and then added it into Procreate and then like my my first draft was that if that makes any sense <laughs> and then i just added all the details on top of that so yeah um this was actually the first time that i've made a digital drawing without line art i don't know i felt like line art was kind of holding me back and i wanted to try something new so i thought that you know i was going to be very artistic and free and experimental with this drawing so i figured i figured that this was the best time to try out lineless art and I'm actually really happy with the outcome. Um, I actually made my own brush for um, the whole coloring in the areas process. <laughs> um, so it's basically the medium hard airbrush, but the tips, I don't know how to explain this. Tips are smaller. I'll show a picture of it here. And uh, so you get kind of like this brush stroke. So it's, I don't know how to explain this, but it it has the same function as like the line art tools. So you can get these nice little like brush strokes, but they're not really like hard strokes. Like with the line art brushes, it's kind of softer like the airbrushes. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. Maybe I'll add a little footage of um, me testing out the brush and you can know what I mean. So after the sketch, I turned down the opacity of my sketch layer and then the next thing i did was color in each of the different areas in the color that i want them to be just to get a feel for all the colors and yeah just getting all that down so like my base color layers and to do that i used um that brush that i created so that i would get somewhat of a soft edge but not too soft that makes any sense i don't know if that even makes any sense but yeah after i finished my base color layers um it was time to start shading and to do that i i pretty i think i pretty much only used the medium hard airbrush and i like it because um it's not too soft and it's not too hard so like i can i can make like hard shadows with it but I can also make really soft like gradients and stuff with it. So I just, I don't know. That's just my favorite brush. So yeah, I think just about this entire coloring process was done with the, the medium hard brush. I, I really like it. <laughs> also, you'll see that a few times while I was um, filling in the base color layers, I would turn the, the background to a darker color. And I do that because sometimes, especially when you're coloring in, like, for example, Zhang Li's skin or the light gray slash white areas of his outfit, it's it's kind of hard to tell if you've missed a spot because the background is white. So if, you, if you're coloring in a light area and you want to make sure that you're actually color, you didn't miss a spot, <laughs> then I recommend turning the background to this dark color because then it shows a lot better. So, yeah, because, uh, oh, I didn't explain this, but <laughs> when I was coloring in the base color layers, then I went around like all the outlines and then used the color drop function to quickly color in the areas. So kind of like the bucket tool, 
that a lot of programs have. If you just hold down on the little color wheel and then move over to whatever area you want to fill in, then it works at, like the bucket tool. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's not very precise all the time. So it tends, it tends to skip a few areas, which is why I need to double check to make sure that I've colored everything in. <laughs> and then once that was finished and I went on to the coloring, I, uh, I turned the layers on alpha lock so that I don't color outside of the lines. I know that's a very like basic tip in uh, digital art, but just in case there's any like newbies watching and you didn't know, then yeah, alpha lock has saved my life. <laughs> A little coloring tip um, this is a mistake that I think just about every beginner makes I mean I made the same mistake and I still find myself making that mistake every now and then but um, don't don't blend everything don't overly blend because I, I know um, how tempting that smudging tool is when you're first getting into digital art but believe me it looks a lot better if you leave some harsher lines some harsher shadows don't just don't overblend everything. <laughs> For example, if you look at Zhongli's face, um, I had, I guess, a gradient for his cheeks because you know cheeks have a little color. So you know I smudged that out as best as I could. But for the harsher shadows, like behind his nose and you know where the hair casts a shadow, then I didn't I didn't blend it. I just Kind of left it like that and yeah that's the best example i could come up with i don't know how else to explain it <laughs> but yeah you wouldn't want to complete you wouldn't want to completely blend out areas like that <laughs> and another coloring tip that i have is to not shade with only darker tones of the same color but also incorporate some other colors in there that makes your color i mean <laughs> that makes your drawing look a lot more dynamic a lot more lively more real i guess so Again, for example, with the face, um, the darkest shadows have more of a pink tone, and then the, the then the even darker shadows, I think I added a little bit of purple. I tend to do that with the skin a lot. And then at the very end, you'll see that I go in with um, some, I guess, like glowy highlights, <laughs> and that's yellow, and that makes his skin look a lot more alive, <laughs> a lot more dynamic. And with just about, everything i tend to shade the very dark the very darkest areas with purple i don't know why that just works out very well with me not just for digital art but i tend to do that with um my marker art as well <laughs> now at the very end of this drawing i actually tested out some color use that i just realized i forgot to add in the child drawing but whatever <laughs> i um i wanted to do sort of what i did with my hanako and yashiro drawing i'll show a picture of it here but if you can if you look very closely you'll see that i used a lot of different colors and kind of random areas and i just i loved the way that turned out like i used a little yellow there a little green there a little red there and i just absolutely loved how that turned out so i was wondering how i could incorporate something like that in other art so i don't know if this even really worked for my zongli drawing but i at least added some blue and some purple at somewhat random areas i mean they're not random areas they're the darkest shadows in some areas so yeah i don't know if that really made a difference if it really helped or if it made it worse but yeah i experimented with that a little bit <laughs> one thing i've started doing with all my digital digital drawings is um once i've finished coloring it i add another layer on top of all the other other layers and I set the layer mode to multiply and I the color varies but I tend to go with kind of like a purpley tone like a dark purple and then I just go in and you and just add darker shadows um, in different areas I guess like if I want the light to be hitting the one side of the character I'll go in on the other side with like a dark purple for example or maybe a blue <laughs> or a red depending on what kind of color you want but uh, yeah here's an example of how it this drawing looks without the multiply and the add which i will talk about afterwards and then how it looks with it and i think it makes all the difference in the world 
like the whole, I don't know, it helps out with the whole atmosphere and the whole feeling of the drawing, I guess. <laughs> Which brings me to my next tip, and that's, um, that's how I add lighting and highlights. I, this is normally the layer at the very top, and I set the layer mode to add, which makes everything kind of glow, I guess. It makes it all like really bright. And then I'll take, well, not always a white. Normally I tend to go with like a very light yellow. And then I'll go, if I, like if I want the light to be hitting from the one side of the character, then I'll go in on that side of the character and add that color, if that makes any sense. Plus all the areas that I want to glow, like where the light will be hitting. And then in that same layer, I'll also go in with white and that's where I add the highlights in like characters' eyes and stuff like that. <laughs> So, yeah. I think that's all I want to say about this drawing, actually. <laughs> the only other thing I have to say is that um, sketching in all the little details in Zhang Li's clothes was actually torture. And th the same went for Child because, oh my gosh, you know, Mihoyo, they put in so much effort in these character designs. It's like, you don't, you're not, you don't really know about it until you try to draw it. And then it's like, oh my god, all the details. <laughs> But, I mean, it was fun. It was just very challenging. <laughs> oh, one last thing is um, I didn't want these to just have white backgrounds. I want them all to have backgrounds that kind of fit the character. So, um, the original art of Zhang Li from MiHoYo has this kind of like, this yellow sky behind Zhang Li, like with like orange clouds and yeah, it just it gives off a strong Zhongli vibe, so I added that in my drawing, and I really like it. And then with Child, I'm not sure if you can see this yet in the video, but I added... Well, it's supposed to be water, <laughs> and I think it made all the difference in the world. I absolutely love it. <laughs> for Child's background, I actually ended up using a different brush for once. I used the Jagged brush, and yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> But yeah, I guess it's time to talk about uh, my child drawing. And the process was basically the same as the Zongli drawing. <laughs> um, you know, I had the sketch and then I skipped the line art and just went straight to the base coloring. And again, I used that, um, that brush that I created. And then for all the shading, I used my normal medium um, airbrush. Medium hard airbrush. And... Yeah, I don't really have much more to say about it, actually. At the very end, um, of course, I went in with the multiply and the add layers to add even more depth in the coloring and the shading. Also, I spent around six hours on the Zhongli drawing and about seven hours on um, the child drawing. So yeah, these were very time consuming, but they were so worth it because I think they're or they're definitely one of my favorite digital drawings or not just digital drawings but i think they're two of my favorite drawings ever so yeah i had a lot of fun making those drawings <laughs> so i'm hoping that i'll be able to draw every genshin impact character like this and then maybe selling them as prints over the summer but you know we'll see how far i come i'm actually working on the next genshin impact drawing right now i'm working on xiao and then after that, I'll draw Venti because I like. I'm gonna draw like two and two characters, sort of together. If that makes any sense. So that's why I had Child right after Zhang Li, because they kind of work together. <laughs> and then I'll have Venti um, right after Xiao because they kind of, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping that I can finish Xiao by um, this Sunday. So by the time this video is out, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> And then by the time I finish both Xiao and Venti, then I'll make another video out of it. <laughs> so yeah, I have a little bit of time left, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, Genshin Impact, even though I've spoken about it many times. Um, I know I have at least, I have, wait, I have an Amber video out, a Venti video out, a uh, Zucrose, um, and then I already have a Zhongli video out, so I think... This should be my fifth Genshin Impact video out now, <laughs> so I've talked quite a bit about Genshin Impact. 
So if you want to hear my thoughts, just watch any of those other videos because I talk. Yeah, I've said a lot about it already and I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe I'm still like really into it. Because <laughs> I can't remember when I first started playing, but I believe it was in October? Yeah, because I think that the game was released in September and I didn't play it when it first came out. But I think I played a few weeks afterwards. But yeah, anyway. Um... I have nothing else to say that I haven't already said. <laughs> my favorite character is Zhong Li, so that's why I wanted to start with him. Second favorite is Albedo, and then my third favorite is Ganyu. <laughs> and then like Venti and Dilik, I guess, maybe Kaya. What's your team setup? I've I'm actually really curious of what your guys what your team setups are, because I'm kind of working on my team because I have such a basic team. And I know it could be better, especially when I have uh, two five-star characters. I want to use at least one of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully I can get Bennett soon. Because I really want him on my team. But um, I think my next team, or the team that I'm working on at the moment, is uh, I think it'll be Dilek and maybe Fischl and Shinkyu, I think. I heard somewhere that they were very good or they're a nice trio and then if you add Bennett then that could be a pretty powerful team so yeah we'll, we'll see <laughs> but yeah I think that's all I have time for right now <laughs> so let me know what you guys thought of these drawings let me know who your favorite character is and let me know who or what your team setup is because it's that I'm very curious of <laughs> And I'll see you guys next Sunday.